Hello everyone and welcome to another strategy breakdown. In this video we will show you an A-side rush on the Inferno map. The action takes place in the 14th round of the first half where LDLC is down to 4 to 9 playing as terrorists. Let us see how the strategy looks on the map first. As you may well see, terrorists send 4 men to the second middle, 3 of whom rush the apartments, while the fourth one pushes pillars through the middle together with the fifth player. Some of you might think that this strategy worked out only due to the fact that CTs decided to cover B with three men. However, in the end of the video I will try to convince you that this is a good strategy overall. Let us move on to each player's role now. Maniac's only mission is to storm CT's apartments as soon as possible. There really isn't much to talk about since he dies before reaching the bomb site. In my humble opinion, he made a big mistake by running without his AK in hand. Yet he probably thought that the counter-terrorists he spotted would have relocated to the big pit and wanted to catch him beforehand. That is, of course, just a guess. UZ runs towards the second middle and casts a smoke which lands inside the pit. This smoke is actually pretty good, since it forces a CT placed there to relocate and thus expose himself. Besides, we all know that it is very hard to kill an enemy holding the balcony and the quad. Then, UZ jumps off the balcony, kills Flusher and plants the bomb. Happy runs towards the middle balcony and spams the carpets with a couple of bullets. After that he follows Maniac and Yuzi, but once the bombsite is taken, he falls back to the apartments. Eventually he gets killed by rotating Olof Maester. Too bad, since it would have been a great spot to stab the retaking cities in the back. Apex's role is as simple as the whole strategy itself. He casts a decoy to the top middle, which is, of course, optional, and then he just runs through the second middle and smokes off the arch. Following that, Apex storms the bombsite and hides himself in the big pit. Kelly has the toughest part of the mission. First of all, he needs to cast a very precise smoke onto the top middle, which will give him the cover and allow him to run straight through the middle. Secondly, he has to flash out the bomb site and the big pit, remembering to cast those flashes on time, not to blind his teammates who are pushing their apartments. It is only then that he storms the bomb site through the quads and hides himself once the bomb is planted. Now, I would like to tell you why I believe this strategy is good, despite the fact that a site was defended by three CTs only. First of all, nowadays we rarely see any rushes at all, so CTs could not have expected such a move from terrorists. Secondly, it allows you to quickly take control over the apartments and the top middle. Now, let us assume there are three cities on the A side. One would hold the arch, another one would be placed in the big pit, and the remaining one would be somewhere around the quad. What would they do once your smokes and flashes land? The guy from the arch would in most cases fall back to the CT connector and wait until you run into his crosshair or until you stumble into the reinforcements from the B side. The guy from the big pit has two options. He either hides in the smoke and lets you dispose of his teammate, plays near the quad, or he abandons his safety and fights back, thus becoming an easier kill for you. If he decided to fight, he exposes himself to the flash cast by Kali. 
the Quad City will most likely rotate back to the bomb site. However, if he does not expect such a quick rush, you might be able to catch him off guard. All in all, if you coordinate your attack properly, everything should go rather smoothly. That will be all for now, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching and see you soon with another strategy breakdown.